There we go. Lab number three. Four, actually. I'm gonna take Shaper of Storms for extra shock effect. Okay, what are the treasure chests? Nothing. Nothing. It's better than nothing. We need longer flame trails, man. Oh! <laughs> Fuck! Yo, divine number one. Just uh, approximately 1,499 divines to go to to finish this build for for mid game. It's not even a boss drop, it's fucking Realm Shaper. Bossing, dude. It's bossing in PUE, man. Oh, Innocence touched! Uh. Oh boy, that's gonna be a boss fight. Fucking kidding me. Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. Today, recap of day one. I know it is the second video basically from Leak Start, but the first one is over the night, if the, the campaign thing is, and today is actually day one. Uh, pretty much because it's still like within the first 20 hour of the leak start basically right so today recap number one in the start or the first video we went to mapping at least finish the campaign today we started mapping and today i want to show you the upgrades that i made uh the changes to the build how it's performing and how did we do overall the big drops and so on let's start with the big drops i found a divine at least so still no big items no gloom fang no uh I don't know, conversion watcher's eye, no nothing, uh, not even a six link, um, but I'm still having a really good time. I even was pushing up to like tier 15 corrupted maps, so my Atlas progression as of right now is a 63 completion. So I basically just, I have not bought a single map, right? I just started to do my first maps and just found higher maps. I went with my Atlas passive tree that is linked in the description below, by the way. I'm just rushing all these like shaping the skies, shaping the mountains, um, as well as the Kirak modifiers uh, with shaping the valleys and shaping the seas, which are all like map sustain, um, higher map ch um, drop chances, maps to drop higher tiers of maps and so on. And this is why I basically had such a good time just upgrading maps and just self-finding uh, all these kind of like white maps, uh, yellow maps and so on. And just always like alts um, hit it to see if you have it completed. Don't forget, white maps need to be completed. Magic to make it completed. Um, for the bonus objective, yellow is rare and the high tier maps have to be rare and corrupted. And uh, sometimes you just have some ridiculously hard mods. And I think this is even like, I don't know, like some kind of hard map. But I kind of like a bit struggling in this case, not because of the build or anything, but you know, I need a lot of like I still need a lot of like low tier maps and mid tier maps, right? So I'm I'm just wondering, should I actually force myself to push like in the highest tiers here if I know that I still need to do a lot of upgrades and farming six links and stuff and then afterwards do the low tier maps to make my atlas complete, right? So today I really like just started mapping and just see where the journey ends and it actually ended today on the first day of mapping with T15 corrupted maps which I think is pretty darn good. So absolutely no problem with this build, it's just a breeze, it's just so much fun to play and I'm really really enjoying the grind even though we didn't really have like too much uh, luck in the loot. As I said I found one divine, uh, it is Still over here. I was like, yo, where's my divine? Because I'm used to have it on the exalted orb slot here, right? Because why is there mirror and exalt? It should be divine and exalt. But hey, maybe in the future. So I have one divine. 
and I think all the the upgrades that I would like to have, whether it's just um, the Black Star Ring, right, um, the uh, Gloom Fang, whether it's like the uh, Six Ling, a good one uh, that I plan to use, you know, they're all like two, three, four divine upgrades. So at the moment, I just don't want to break this divine. I'm just going to hold on to it and hope that I'm going to find a second divine tomorrow and then maybe buy one of the bigger upgrades because I'm like not the biggest fan of doing like small step upgrades, right? I don't want to spend like... 100 chaos in a better chest if the next better chest would be two divine so i just like stick with the one that i have and uh, that's pretty much it i would say we're gonna do a map showcase we're gonna run this uh, crater map over here since i just found this one uh, and it's not completed yet we have like some extra crit crit multi uh let's hope that we're not gonna one shot it but overall um there has been some reports basically from uh, other viewers that are playing this build saying i'm slow i have no clear I am super squishy, I have no damage, and whatsoever, I just cannot agree with all of that, you know, like, I've been playing this build all day long, uh, we are now level 88, um, so we are barely ever dying, um, I swapped my um, setup from um, Purity of Elements to Determination now, we also run a Molten Shell, so I also have some form of armor, it's not insane, but it's still better than Zero, right, so I'm rarely getting one-shotted, my clear is amazing, and even though I don't have a Gloom Fang, I don't have a Six Link, I don't have quality on my gems, I don't have Awakened gems and whatsoever, um, I'm having absolutely no problem. So if, you, if you're if stuck with something, then please check out um, the current PoE that I have. Maybe read the guide that I've wrote uh, on Max Roll or follow on the previous videos. Maybe you find a couple of things um, that you just do wrong. You know, I, I had people that playing... Um, EK, for example, and still have an unspec of the physical to fire conversion and still running the Rimstar Gloves, for example, right? It just doesn't line up because if you play Wave of Conviction, you want to get the Fist to fire conversion. If you play EK, you want to have the Fist to cold conversion and not. You unspec the Fist to fire, right? And if you're wondering, uh, just YOLO-wise, I found this helmet, or at least I, I found this helmet on PoE Trade, better said, right? With EK fires projectiles in a circle this used to be the um threshold jewel that we had in the past um the ring of blades or whatever it's called this got removed but now we have the helm enchant um and you know this one has movement speed it has a lot of dexterity and this build is strength and dexterity starved as you might uh, encounter already so always make sure if you need it to get like some stats over here or maybe the stats over here or other items i bought a big ring with a lot of dexterity as well i am using a strength dexterity amulet so just getting all these stats in and the devotus made sense for me because it was the cheapest with the enchant i got it for 30 chaos um and it has movement speed and dexterity and yes it does have you know, attack speed that I don't need, but reduce global physical damage. This is a bad mod, but it's not the worst. You know, it's, it's like a 10% increase getting like annulled off more or less because it would be worse if it would say 10% less global physical damage. Then it's the same, the equivalent uh, of a more damage. And this is like uh, absolutely terrible, right? So that's the reason why my EK is basically in a Nova. So let's, let's take a look. How does it look like? Um, I'm having here, usually in the old build, I had Malevolence and Haste in the swap, right? But this is because I had enough mana reservation efficiency that I could uh, reserve Hatred um, as a permanent aura. But I think Hatred is a lot stronger than Malevolence, so that's why I have here Hatred and Haste for now. And uh, Malevolence is somewhere in my offhand weapon to just level it, right? I'm not using it uh, at all, so... Basically, you would swap based on what you need, right? If you have a lot of damage, you're gonna go haste for more speed. And if you need the damage, for for example, for bosses, um, then you're gonna use the hatred. But personally, since I'm still running a five link, since I'm not having awakened gems, since I don't have good gear or anything like that, um, I just permanently run the um, the hatred. So I have. We say the fixed gem setup that I want to use for endgame. I also have like Hydrosphere, uh, even though I don't have Gloomfang. And Hydrosphere isn't doing anything if you don't have Gloomfang, right? So that's why I just want to say um, it is... I'm just preparing for endgame, okay? I don't need to have like some uh, middle ground steps to... Uh, I just I just finish it and as soon as I get my items, then I don't need to adjust my uh, skills either way. And here's the boss that absolutely no problem. Just get your Arcanist brand up. Um... Yeah, and just let it die, basically. Uh, a good thing for additional boss DPS, if you are having struggles with a single target, you know um, that there is always, like, a rare pack next to the boss. And since we are running Obliteration and we do have explosions, let's say, um, I don't know, um, 
I don't know, this bridge here is the boss, right? And try to lure the monsters to the boss, decay it, it will explode. And then you're gonna have like a massive ignite that is usually one tapping the boss because it's a lot higher ignite from the chaos explosion than your EK would doing because it's based off the monster life. So the higher um, the map tier, the more monster life the monsters have, the higher the, the base ignite damage uh, will be, right? So this is like a, a nice easy trick. Um, to just get some more juice out of for boss DPS. So just don't instantly blow up the pack. Just lure the, the, the adds next to the boss and just blow everything up and GG. That's that's about it, right? And while the boss is just dying, you're just going to throw in your Arcanist brand. You're going to get the flame surge. You're going to get uh, the other stuff uh, off and it shouldn't be any big issue. Uh, when it comes to lap, I started early on today doing the third, uh, the second and the third lap, um, going for the Mastermind of Discord, as well as the uh, Heart of Destruction, which is super nice. And like, I don't know, like two hours ago, I did the Uber Lab first try, and I got now Shaper of Storms, which is a, uh, another additional DPS based on the shocks that we're going to inflict. And now it's actually worth... Um, stacking some uh, increased effect of non-damaging ailments because this is gonna increase our um, our chill and our shock. And yes, we do have um, chill because like, I don't know, like 30% of our damage is still gonna be cold damage, right? And if we stack more and more of this like non-damaging ailment effect, then our chills will be even higher. We're gonna um, reduce the action speed of the monster and uh, just as a layer of defense and we're also gonna need less damage to inflict a big shock but this is like map showcase wise an absolute breeze you go in you press one button and see the world burn everything is exploding herald of ash is going on i'm just having an amazing time so what do we do next um okay let's talk about the atlas tree real quick so i give you guys the link from my current plan so i made this one like before leak start, like in this like one hour um, when I went online, basically before leak start, we just like made a, a passive tree. This is gonna how it's looks uh, looking like as of right now. Um, the core facts here is first of all, you're gonna rush all of the map uh, things to just have a better time of sustaining your maps. Then I went for strong boxes, essences, as well as shrines. I think those three are always nice to have. They don't hurt uh, hurt if you have them, and you're still gonna profit because essences is not a map device, so we're gonna um, get some additional currency based on that. Maybe they're gonna go uh, be even more expensive. Strong boxes, shrines, you know, one click, one EK, everything explodes. It's super enjoyable to kill, uh, to clear off uh, these kind of things. And shrine, obviously, is gonna uh, be better as well. And now I think since I've got the... I don't know, either I expect now into essences or I go straight up into more... Um, yeah, I'm gonna go for shrines first, I think. Because I had some essence monsters that have the modifier with when you have like extra life, as well as like resistant to fire damage and ignite damage. Oh boy, these boys are tanky. And I wanna mention this here. This is not my my end game tree. This tree has the purpose to give me a good time with like Alk and Go and finishing the Atlas. Once I have um like all my Atlas bonus objective, the 115 completed. Once I have my my all favorite uh, map slots, once I have my four void stones and all of that kind of things, you know. Um, and then I'm gonna still probably be mapping like one or two more days um, with all my map sustain just to get a, a good base of maps overall um, to um, just swap around whatever I need. And then I'm gonna make an actual farming strategy. I don't know yet what's gonna be at the moment. I think it's gonna be a mix of like. Um, Delirium as well as Legion because I think both of those mechanics are my favorite ones then probably gonna mix in some Altars uh, and with EK with Ignite, Ignite Prolif and stuff it's just gonna be an, um, hopefully a very good time even like maybe I'm even able to one shot Legions later on with like good AoE scaling from the Herald of Ash and stuff maybe maybe we're gonna get there it would at, um, at least be very fucking cool and it's gonna be a lot of uh, profit uh, in the greater good one more tip um, when it comes to map sustain, since a lot of people are actually struggling early on, yo, I don't have maps, uh, where do we get your maps and stuff, you know, do side content, first tip, right, so if you have your soul fight full, go into the mine, you know, it, it needs some pushing requirements, um, but you're gonna get a lot of uh, map sustain once you get in all these, like, delf cities, you know, um, whatever it is, you're gonna get a lot of maps out of that, and... Side content means also do your temple, your alba temple. Do use your leak mechanics, so like on, on here, right? Farm your beasts, do your alba temple, go into the mine, do some betrayal. Like everything you do outside of mapping, as long as it's content, can reward you with maps and map sustain. Another good trick is Kirok. So 
The way Kirak works, you know, he always has like a bunch of maps for sale. Usually it's like twice as much because I just uh, bought a bunch of like every time he has maps that I haven't completed, I just buy them. And then I just run them. It's usually like five, six, seven maps that I get from him that I haven't completed yet. Um, so what if he doesn't have anything new? Then all, the only thing you need to do is go to your map device, click here on your Kirak missions, and then just choose any of those. Maybe um, if you haven't completed one, so I would probably choose this one right now just because, hey, I haven't completed it. It's a magic yellow map. And every time you complete one of these maps, the counter goes down and he will refresh his um, inventory, right? So the way I would do it right now is since I'm still farming like low tier maps, I would go in, um, just do my Kirok white missions. You know, I would now do Maelstrom just because it's a unique map and I haven't completed it. But then the Kirok uh, mission, like after I've done the map, I check again, purchase maps. Okay, he has new maps. Okay, what do I need? Then I buy them all again. I run them accordingly to, you know, white, magic, um, yellow, rare and red. Uh, rare corrupted once i haven't gotten anything left go back do one single kirak mission and check the vendor it's just a bit problematic because these maps do cost a quite a bunch of alchemy orbs you get a lot of alchemy orbs so i haven't bought any yet but i'm down to like uh, 12 alchemy orbs so if i buy like one or two maps uh, when he refreshes his window uh, i might be just start for um is uh, you know for the alchemy orbs again um okay next point before we talk too much about mapping and stuff Gearing. What did I change? So, first of all, we got now an obliteration wand. Uh, we're still gonna use the mark of submission here with dexterity. Like, all of my rare items are life resistance, right? Either it's the belt that I got cheap for like three chaos, I think. Um, the amulet I still have like from my solo cell phone because I don't really want to change that. I don't want to buy an amulet for like 50 chaos if I know, hey, like in a day or two, we're gonna buy a gloom fang. So, I don't want to invest into that. That's why I'm also not getting any anointments on it because whatever you know and i want to show you the way how i purchase these items so if you go to poe trade let's assume we want to buy a nice chest or let's say uh yeah chest it doesn't matter right we're gonna go in here body armor we're gonna pick here what do we need based on links so when i say hey i want to have like a, a five link or something and i want to have like three blue two green one red i'm gonna do um go um three Blue, two, uh, two green, one red. Yeah. And then we're going to click here on links five. So this is the socket amount. This is the link amount. Why do I want to have actually a six socket? Just because I want to level my gems. And this would be the next support gem if I would use it, right? Not necessary, but this is just the way I do it. Then for me, always two maximum life to all elemental resist or total elemental resistance. Elemental resistance. And that's about it, right? And now it will list you based on your search functions. And, and this is like all your five links with the right colors. But here, pay attention. You want to have red and green together because it's ethereal knives and cold to fire. This is like your baseline of support gems, right? If you have then um, a triple blue or a double green or something, doesn't really matter too much. But usually I say like, okay, I want to have like 70 life on my chest at least. And then I click here on the gray one um, and sort by your all resistance. Next step, I'm going to go down here and say Chaos Orb, maximum, I don't know, like 10 Chaos, for example. And there you go. Now I could like check here. Oh, this one has 54 total resistance with Fire Lightning, has a bunch of life and has the socket colors that I need. This I could buy for 10C and I should be fine, right? Um, if we're going to do the same with like boots, for example, right? So I go for boots. It's always the same. Um, it's always um, to maximum life as the first step, total elemental resistance, and on boots, I obviously want to have movement speed as well. I'm going to say the maximum chaos buyout should be like 5 chaos. I want to have at least like 25 movement speed and like 70 life. This is like my baseline, and then I'm just going to sort by resistance and see what are good boots. Can I use them? Oh, they're mirrored. That's not good. So maybe um, go down here and say like corrupted, no. Um, and then just going to check and heal like 5 chaos, 5 chaos. Sometimes you get like some really fucking good boots for like 3 or 2 chaos and even if they're 5 chaos just whisper him like hey can you do 4 chaos can you do 3 chaos if you're st uh, struggling early on right and this is basically how I bought all my gear on the ring the same thing life resistance and I wanted to have dexterity right and this ring was 2 chaos I think it had 
40 dex, it has ES, it has 70 life, it has uh, 30 res on the implicit and 24, and I even have an open prefix, but I don't really have something to craft on it, so I just picked mana before we don't use anything here, right? And overall, I think this is like a pretty good way. I'm still running the Rimsuro. I'm wondering if this is actually necessary at all at this point, but I'm still gonna go with it until uh, I will finish my uh, gloves over here. So I have like here um, the cold conversion gloves with double res with an open modifier that's gonna be uh, life at some point. So we can just like, uh, gonna throw it on here, um, which is kind of bad because... Wait, why didn't... Eh? Oh, it's gloves, so it doesn't have the highest tier. I was like, yo, wait a second. Um, but now I'm just gonna like throw in some uh, of my my Eldritch currency, right? And just gonna try to the item is unusable. Oh wait, there is. I'm pretty sure there's a bug currently with those Eldritch orbs. That's why I cannot use them. But yeah, I'm just gonna like farm and then throw on stuff on there. And if I get um, my exposure, my fire exposure and hit, I would probably consider taking those 32 um, and then um, take the mastery and then run around with like a 70 conversion and then maybe get back to fire to um, the fist to fire because I don't want to have any kind of physical damage. But it's like futuristic music, but I do have some gloves with some conversion on it already. Um, other than that, um, any other changes? Yeah, the Devotus, as I said, Explained it early on, the rest, life resistance, life resistance whatsoever, Path of Building Link is in the description below. When it comes to the skill points, since I'm not running any cluster jewels right now, uh, I'm just gonna like fill up any kind of life um, nodes that I have, you know, take life nodes over here, I spec into the Snowforge, taking some masteries, alley damage, leech this energy shield, super nice to sustain um, your Eldritch battery, mind of a matter, wicked ward uh, combination, and I even picked up Divine Shield for now that gives me another like ES recovery based on how much physical damage uh, I take. I mean, you know, I'm probably gonna get like level 92 or something by tomorrow, so it's another four points. So as long as I don't get any cluster jewels, I'm just gonna pick whatever I think is necessary. You know, some extra life, maybe a jewel slot finally. Two points jewel slot here, two points over here, two points over here. Like six points and I could get like some nice life um, dot multi jewels, for example. I think they're like a chaos or two, you know, and then you could add like all res or whatever you need, like some strength, some dexterity, some other um, useful stats. Just think a little bit outside of the box and you're gonna be uh, just fine. Good. Uh, other than that, I don't think I have too much to say today. Um, I showed you how I bought my items. I showed you about my Atlas passive tree, the map showcase and how I actually get the progression going. And I think that's pretty much it for today. Still super happy about the progress today. I'm going to pump even harder tomorrow. Maybe we can get like the 100 completion. I mean, honestly, if I would get like another one or two divines by tomorrow by just mapping or maybe I find something interesting or something like that, you know, maybe a six link that I can sell for like a 50 chaos and whatnot. If I'm able to get a gloom thing, I'm actually honestly looking towards just clearing the entire thing tomorrow. If I'm not struggling with the map sustain, but we're gonna see, and I don't think that I need to stress myself. I mean, it's day one, it's end of day one of the day, you know, and I'm like all, uh, halfway done with my Atlas tree on the so-called bad bait leak starter build, which I think I just have an amazing time and I can just keep on recommending this build. It is just amazing and it works uh, like wonders. It's actually really fucking cool. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.